What's up YouTube and Facebook? Blue Dooley with the wife's HPI Venture in her brand new 1946 Dodge Power Wagon body. Uh, we're both kind of big fans of Dodge and the local hobby store slash pharmacy had one of the bodies in stock. And of course she thought it was really cool looking, so did I. So we picked that up for her truck and then she picked out the Tester's color change paint emerald and turquoise. It's a little trickier to shoot than just a regular spray or even a metallic. The uh, color change paint is really thin and you don't see the pigment even after well, two good good heavy coats which I don't think is actually what you need. And You don't really see the color until you actually spray the black over the top of it since this is like saying you paint it backwards so you put this down first and then spray everything else black and then the color really shows up good uh, I actually have a fender from the Grand Hauler that I'm not going to use the full fenders on it so I sp sprayed it silver and then I threw black on part of it and then put the color change paint over the top of it and it gets this effect the silver makes it a little shinier I'll uh, get that fender here in a minute. The biggest problem I had painting the power wagon body was here in the bed, where the two bed sides and the front and the back and the tailgate, the parts are real close together. The color change paint's really thin and it's hard to get sprayed evenly in those places. So I thought, yeah, I'll spray a bunch on a paper plate and use a brush to touch it up. That didn't work either. That actually probably made it worse than it was. Uh, on a hard body or a body like the front of the truck where there's a lot of space to get in with the can and get it good even thin coat because the directions say uh, just two coats. Very light coats I should add. Apply two or more light coats as few minutes as part. Text message. It does dry pretty quick, so it doesn't take too long to put down a couple of coats. The overall effect is really pretty. I mean, it even in the garage, it shines up pretty good. The color looks really good reflecting off of the black gloss on the fenders here. Uh, the headlights were another problem. Getting those painted, it, it's, it's probably better for hard plastic bodies or if you're going to paint on the outside of something that way you can get the light even coats because uh, I did. I had some problems in the bed and then one of the cab corner, the driver's side cab corner puddled a little weird but not so much as a puddle as it kind of drew away from itself almost like a bubble and uh, so the black came through a little deeper on that and not much to report on the CXT sadly yeah so I left the running board uh, rock rail in here just to protect the fender. If we get a good angle, I mean, if you get the truck wedged up against something, that keeps the body from folding too far in, and you know it'll keep keep the body from being snagged by rocks or tree branches. So I decided to leave them in there. Right there is the only spot of the cab I had problems with. Like I said, it, it's almost like it bubbled but pulled away from itself and then the black just came through a little bit more than the rest of the body. This side it almost looks like somebody spilt something on the bed and it kind of ate away the paint. It's kind of a neat effect. Personally I'd have liked it if the whole truck came out nice and smooth like the cab my wife's still really happy with it. She likes the way it looks. Because we were talking about it, and it did look like somebody had gotten something on the bed and spilt it and had been used. So she's really happy with it. I angled the shocks to the furthest position they could on the rear and then started trimming. If I had to do it again, I'd leave them in the original vertical position and then just notch this part of the bed out a little more instead of having to make one for the shock 
and one for the shock tower. It doesn't take, like I said, you, I could have trimmed it a little more and got it sitting a little flatter, but uh, I didn't want to remove too much material, especially right here, and make it any thinner. The other thing we did to the truck is, on the front end, I cut the loop that goes across the headlight on the FJ Cruiser body because it didn't line up with the truck's headlights. So you need to smooth them out a little more. But actually the stock HPI bumper looks pretty good with the power wagon body. I mean, it almost comes out to where the fender starts curving back. So the back bumper, however, does not work with the body at all. The body just hangs out too far out the back. I mean, it, even with it as far out as it could, the whole bumper only gets about even with the back of the bed. And I'd have to cut so much material off of either the bed to clear the bumper or chop the bumper to bits to get it to fit that uh, the wife decided we'll just leave it alone and leave it for the other, the uh, cruiser body. Articulation and stuff actually is a little better with this body than the Venture as the front tires were rubbing a little bit right here, but since the power wagon has this, these much bigger fenders, there is no body rubbing at full lock. And I lean the front shock back a little bit to get a little more room between the uh, body and the shock. It does fit the truck's wheelbase, I think, real well. And that wheel's pretty well centered. Maybe just a hair back, that's all right. But the main thing is that tester's paint. I mean, there's a few little blotches here that are hard to see. But overall, I'm really happy with it. If you are going to use the color shift paint, not color change paint, it even says shift, shift on the can, you definitely want to make sure the body is real clean and go with very, very thin coats. And... Uh, the can actually says you can get different effects with uh, different back colors, which I tried to do with the silver and it just didn't really show up even with two paints. It makes the silver look a little more metallic and shiny, but you don't get the actual color change, which there now you can actually see it's a lot, a lot more turqu or, uh, yeah, turquoise on top and then here where the light's directly hitting it, it's a little more emerald. Not sure how well the camera catches that. Well, there we go. That's a good shot of the paint. Again, though, it is it is real thin. So uh, if you don't have patience for painting, I'd maybe recommend having somebody you know who paints a little better than you throw down the color shift paint. Because... I think that was part of my problem is I've never used it before and I don't have any patience so I might have got it on a little thicker than needed but the wife is really happy with it so as soon as she's done with all of her weekend affairs which I think she has some more church stuff and uh, then we'll get out and get her out on the trail with her new power wagon body which she's really looking forward to. I pull back enough. That's <laughs> that's the size difference between the 1.9 equipped crawler and the 6 inch tall stretched 2.2 tires of the CXT. Although really they're about scale to each other. The CXT is a really big truck and the power wagons, while pretty good size, they're they're narrower and a lot shorter than the CXT, that's for sure. So, haven't done much work on that. But if you want to do something a little different with your paint, you you might check out the color shift stuff. I only need I didn't even use a whole can for this whole truck. It is a little more expensive. I got this one at Hobby Lobby for eight bucks a can, and a regular can of uh, Diamond Dust. It's only $5.79, so the color shift is a little more expensive. It does require a little more patience, but 
you know, if you have it and you want something different, um, you'll get a really, really unique paint out of it. So, always please click like and subscribe. I have some more videos to edit today, so there'll probably be a couple coming out. And I will catch you the next time.